Wednesday, sir anime. We just made it awkward for the last about five minutes. So, uh, <laughs> what a shocker! No. I know, right? Uh, we'll have a T-shirt with it warning people in <laughs> all the time. So, uh, every day. I'm Chris. That's Dave, and we are once again joined by Sam. Once Who, again, brought uh, some more Miyazaki. Would you care to explain to the audience what we got here today? Today we have Castle in the Sky. Basically, it's about a castle in the sky. <gasps> Truth in advertisement? Yes! It's a shocker, I know. Uh, You're going to have to use your projection voice. Project yes, i got to speak up this time, because it was very quiet. Uh, do, a, do you want me to just do a plot summary? Or? Uh, ask him, he's that's the how, host. Yeah. No, that's how we do things here. Go for it. Got a mysterious girl dropping out of the sky. Uh, everybody is after her. She meets up with another kid, Patsu, who's all about rescuing her, even though he just met her. Good for him. David loves Patsu. Yep. And then they're on this quest to find the castle in the sky. There you go. And the misadventures that it entails. <laughs> Pretty much. Patsu must be Japanese for fucking gravity hates you. <laughs> this kid falls off of everything. He's indestructible, too. Like, I'm not arguing. When you said that, I was like, eh. But then, yeah, the movie <laughs> put it through him. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, now, granted, uh, these two kids, Shida and Patsu, kind of like, build this fast relationship real quick, you know. <laughs> well, when goons <laughs> and the army are chasing <laughs> you. Fair. And then, um, but it's, this is big misadventure of just, you know, random stuff before we ever really get into the meat of what's going on. And, um... What? I don't know if it's because I've watched it so many times, but it makes sense to me. It's not that it didn't make sense, it's just that it took about... No, it took literally <laughs> about a good third, if not halfway through the movie, before we actually got what the hell was going on. I mean, it so, did not make sense to me, and I do agree with you. Like, the first one third is just chaos now for the sake of an adventure and fun yeah it was pretty cool but chaos i'm gonna try one thing real quick go ahead keep going well it's i, I look at it like okay you know it's cool that we're getting all this action right off the bat you know i'm hooked but with no actual you know substance as to what we're why we're chasing said girl why this no, no, is no. happening they gave you subtle clues you just weren't paying attention at well, the very uh, beginning the, yeah. only, I mean, the, only clue they, the only clue they gave you is obviously she had something that, that everybody wants that everyone wanted there you go that's fine but i feel like cool what what's what's it about what do what are we really after obviously I, it's I, not just her i get your point that it's not needed there's a girl, she falls out of the sky, floats down, dude saves her. Oh, by the way, people were breaking in the doors and shooting at each other trying to get to her. So, you know, I, I, I get that. and But it is, it is very confusing. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, it was very distracting trying to get into the story when the story wasn't letting me in. Well, that's a, to me, it's that's like, a, hey, just watch this. That's a typical Miyazaki. It, it raises more questions than answers. Uh, Kings of Living Service kind of still gave you the quick, all right, this is what's going on for it, threw you into right. this. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Even this your last note. one. It, even your last one. Totally. While it was whimsical and didn't make sense, was, you did know, hey, there's a family. They moved out into the woods. There's weird spirits going on. Yeah. Do, do, do. I mean, shoot. But not much else to really go off. I mean, Spirit Away even kind of doesn't really... I mean, yeah, you see people farming, and then there's a monster. Yeah. There's a dude who stops the monster. And now he's infected. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, no, Spirit Away. Spirit Away. I was, I was Princess Mononoke. Mononoke. I was on Princess Mononoke. No, that was um, um, Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind. Princess Mononoke, too. Yeah, that's exactly how that yeah, starts. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Spirit Away. We're moving. Hey, let's stop here. We're tired. Oh, no, Dad just drives off drives the road. Drives off the road. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't need shortcut. directions. I'll take a shortcut. I got four-wheel drive. I bought my car in America. <laughs> I would have drive it like one, too. <laughs> well, supposedly the parents are based off Americans. They were they were making fun of Americans. No, no, I believe it. I believe that 100%. <laughs> they were like, here's an American stereotype as seen from somebody outside of the country and rammed it up to 11. Yeah. Yes. Which is funny. 
envious me. This is, like I said, out of all the movies I like films, this is the only one where I literally go, what's happening? Oh wait, we're halfway through the film? Now you're gonna tell me what's going on? I mean, I enjoyed the film enough, yes. but there's a lot of stupidity in it. <laughs> Most different parts here. No, no, no! Come no. Come he starts off dumb and then gets brave. Yeah. Everyone else is, just stays dumb. You, you the know. entire military is dumb. Yep. Yes. The pirates were funny, though. And they were half dumb. <laughs> and strong, for that matter. Just the one guy <laughs> the, no, 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 no. The, the, gentleman, the gentleman duel. Right, right. The, yeah. the only thing they were missing was... Uh, <laughs> Major Colonel... Or Major Armstrong. <laughs> What's his first name? Uh, I cannot remember. So well, it's been so long since I've seen that series. But, uh... In any case, um... Luis? Major Luis Armstrong? I think so. Which is funny, he's still afraid of his smaller, more sleeker sister. <laughs> sleeker! <laughs> <laughs> Dainty. Dainty. He's, he's big muscular, and she's just, you know, average size woman, she's like, I'm gonna kick your ass. He's like, oh shit. Oh god. <laughs> Run, Elric Brothers! I've angered her! <laughs> Run! <laughs> This is all going over my head. You never watched Full Metal Alchemist? Oh, not all the way through. I've seen like... Like the first story arc? Yeah. Ah. Fair enough. Alright. <laughs> oh, now I know who you're talking about. Armstrong's my favorite. Yes, now I know the ball you are, the you are confused. Look into my bolting body sensitives. <laughs> Learn the secrets of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> you're sad. Let me hug you and soothe you with my muscles. Yes, now I know who you're talking about. I love that guy. Plus he has pink sparkles everywhere that everyone sees. Yeah, I've never understood that. So how do you see this? <laughs> He's an alchemist. This is one of his weird gifts. Uh, I mean, the movie was fun. It is it an was. adventure film. If you yes. want an adventure film, pretty kid-friendly. Um, the violence gets a little sideways at times. It might sideways? Scare, might scare some small children, sideways. but it doesn't get graphic. No. It might get graphic, but who's choice to, who's choice to pull a gun out? And shoot at 12 year olds. No, I, I agree. Oh, fuck. oh, he's like, oh man, we need to go away from these people. Let's store a live grenade behind us. That, I mean, like I said, <laughs> it gets graphic at times. Or not graphic, it gets extreme, but not graphic. graphic. True. Cause... The only thing that really gets tore up is a robot, and it's a robot. True. But those kids look like they could have stepped right out of the school from on Poppy Hill. Actually, yeah. Actually, yeah. Fairly accurate. <laughs> and that's what made me like, what is wrong with these people? I mean, I understand you want to catch the girl, but putting a bullet in her ain't the way to catch her. <laughs> that's their first option. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave, and if you want my dating tip, shoot her in the knee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot her in the knee, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, um, Dave. I like the mom who showed up in the street with a frying pan. I thought she was going to hit one of the goons. Hey, yeah. Tangle. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. I forget what. I like that. I'm not sewing up that shirt, by the way. <laughs> Say what? I'm not sewing up that shirt, by the way. <laughs> no, when uh, he's like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> they flex and bust the shirts. I'm not mending that. <laughs> he's I like, like that woman. <laughs> You could tell she had six flavors that don't give a damn on her face. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so what did what was what's one thing that you just like? Since you're the one who brought it, you got to pick one thing, one scene. I was about to say the muscle popping shirt. That, was, that, 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 that was, that's why I got. So I was like, wait, watch this, watch this. Good, it was pretty funny. Because yeah. <laughs> okay. yes. nothing like out of everything in the movie. Actually, the part that got me was the part where uh, all the gentlemen on the ship were like. Like, help I'm cooking? Like, yeah, help cooking, right? I was, like, and I was then just most, about to the say dude, that. The dude with the mustache, well, I was like... Yeah. Yeah, him and his pencil. <laughs> <are not. laughs> his old pencil mustache. He's like, uh... I, now watching more of these movies, I know you like, I love to see the sceneries and how involved they are, and that's a Miyazaki hallmark. Yeah. But I'm starting to see certain caricatures over and over yes. again. Like, the mechanics always seem to have giant bushy mustaches and weird spectacles. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that's just a choice they, they drive into, and not, not a bad one. It's just that you'll see it over and over and over again. Um, they find something that works. Why, why change Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm saying. That's why I'm seeing certain types of caricatures. Uh, 
goofy male leads. Crazy old ladies. Right. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, at least this old lady at least had some guts to her. So. So much. <laughs> the giantest bloomers you ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so here, wear this. Wait, what? What <laughs> the heck is this? A parachute. <laughs> she could have wore a leg as a bodysuit. <laughs> Oh, greatness. What was your favorite scene, sir? Um, well, uh, that one was, the one you talked about was one of my yeah. favorite ones. But um, I like the stuff that used the technology of the the castle. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah. I liked the way it looked. I liked, it reminded me of, of old Atari video games and early Nintendo video games. I made a Tetris joke, but Tetris really isn't what it, I mean... There's things moving, and when they bump, they stop moving, and other pieces move, and I liked it. I don't know why. It's just the shifting walls and stuff. I liked all that. Yeah. Very kind of sci-fi in the middle of this weird-ass <laughs> fantasy with, like, 1880s trains and World War One rifles and World War Two uh, anti-personnel aircraft gunning placements. And people wearing Russian like... uniforms in green. Just there were so many different. Hey, I like this. Let's put that in the movie. I like this. Let's put that in the it's movie. It's like it was they couldn't pick an era of which to put their film in. They're just like we're just gonna mix a little bit of everything. Yeah. In. Although I, I think the idea of why they went really old school to weaponry for the human side of things because of how. Um, it's almost like, like they tried to society has regressed a little bit. Well, they did kind of because with Laputa, they had the advanced technology and yes. they gave that up when they came back to Earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there might have been some kind of wars that had mm -hmm. drove people back to simple times. Makes sense. But they also had floating metals, so what are you going to do? Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead into our favorite segment of the... Low scoring! Yes. We'll go visuals. Kind of want to hear your thoughts there, uh, Mr. Dave. It's Miyazaki. I mean, it almost gets one point just for that alone. Um, it is well. It, everything's done well. It's This is one of his early works, though, right? Uh, 86 is when this came out in Japan. That doesn't answer my question. Yes. No, no, I'm just... 86 is early. Uh, I want to say there's a couple films earlier than that, but this is one of the earlier ones, yes. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot to see in it. It's, it's enjoyable. <laughs> Two. Good. I know you made one comment about it being, um, but that changed a slight anime style. Yes, yes in the midst of the storm, it changed. It. I, that, I did really like that. There's a, a scene where they go through the storm and they kind of pull this whole Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when they go through the tunnel. And the movie just seems to change for four minutes or three minutes, or however long the song took. This storm was like that. It reminded me so much of the Secret of Nim. That's good. I, I too give it a two for pretty much the same reasons. I don't want to kind of keep reiterating the same thing. What about you, Dave? Some. I don't even know if we need to ask him for the scores because it's two. Her score for this movie is an eight. Yes. Just like the last one was an eight, but you do have to tell us why. True. <gasps> The level of detail, just like y'all to a, I'm always just fascinated by the level of detail he gives, just the background. Just the background, oh, there's just a random tree, but look at that, like, you can see the, all the leaves, all the bark, the different shapes of the bark, just... Maybe he's the Japanese version of a, uh, Bob Ross. Only in this happy little tree, <laughs> tree is a weird owl thing that lives, and we'll talk to the four-year-old. Yes. Yes. Alright, so then we're going to audio. Um... Man, I don't want to explain this. Go one. ahead. You start. Yes. Two. Um, audio, like, I love the voices. I didn't really, oh my god, I had a massive blind moment. I didn't realize Mark Hamill was in this movie, even <laughs> though it's on the DVD case. And it's just, yay, Mark Hamill. Geekiness. Yeah, the English actors did an excellent job in this as well. Um, we did watch the English dub, of course. Um, I, I enjoyed, most of the sound effects were pretty good. I don't recall any sound mm -hmm. soundtrack. Not a lot. Of Not music. really. And some of the sound effects I thought were a little cheesy for what they were using them for. 
Uh, like sounds of bombs dropping, but there were actually the robots out there. It just seemed weird to me. I kind of liked it, though. I yeah, the, it. the robots making the whistling, whistling bomb sound. Whistling bomb sound? Well, no, uh, I was talking about, like, with the, when they meet the robot when they first land in Laputa, he has his own little ding. Yeah, yeah. Ding that part was fine, like, but... Because it's him kind of like, I'm here to do my job. Making his musical microwave noises. Yep. Well, even, y'all, I don't know if y'all heard it, but when he walks, he makes a noise. I didn't. Yes. It sounded, it's hard to I describe mean, it. But sound effects, I'm giving it the credit where the credit is due. However, musically, in my background music, nothing popped. Mm -hmm. um, there was too much action, too many explosions, too much gunfire, to where the background music kind of... If there was anything that would have stood out, it could Drowned. It got drowned out. I'd have to give it a one most. I do too. For the exact same reason. Uh, so... But, um, there are, there's a lot of uniqueness to the sound effects. Whether you agree that the robots dropping and sounding like whistling bombs is a good or bad thing, it was a surprise. Yes. It was a surprise coming, it was a, it was a, a sound you've heard if you've watched a lot of movies, but not from the source that you expect to see it from. Exactly. And, I mean, there's a lot of other things that we could point out that were interesting. But, yeah, I think I think they kind of dropped the ball with the music. So, now we're going to story mode. Um, to be honest, the uh, we already kind of went over the basics of the story itself without going into too much detail or spoiling anything, if you haven't seen this film. Um... The thing about it is, uh, as we spoke earlier, it's to me the story the story progression seemed uh, out of out hectic. Of, hectic <laughs> it'd be a good way to put it because it was a little out of order uh, because they give you all the action, all the thrills before they ever truly give you the full explanation of why you should why even you care, care why they're being chased. I mean, I I don't think I have a, such a negative point that you seem to. But I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I don't mean to sound so negative with it. It's just that I feel like if you're going to invest me into a story, you know, I, I shouldn't wait till close to almost halfway through the film before I figure out why I'm even bothering to watch it. I'm sitting here thinking, am I going to give the score it is because it, it's a Miyazaki film and I expect better out of it? Because I'm thinking of a one for the story. So and, am I. And it's not that it's a bad story. Mm -hmm. It's that... It's all over the place. Yeah, it's just so crazy, and then what's important is barely even touched upon. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, my mom, my grandmother taught me these things when I was a little girl. Why did we not find out about that until way near the end of the film? Because that, to me, was a very important part to why she was being chased to begin with. Well, I mean, it was, there's a, there's a literary term called Chekhov's gun, mm -hmm. and the idea is they show you something at the beginning of the play, now, there's a kind of a dual joke is, A, sometimes the thing that they kind of make you think is important at the beginning is never used. It's a red herring. Yes. Later on, it may show up to be the pivot point, like this girl's background was. You know, we didn't get to see it at the beginning. We don't know why it's important. And then, this is so, it's just so wacky. Yeah. But, yeah, I give it a one. I mean, I like the story, um, but it's kind of... I have to say honestly, of the Miyazaki films I've watched, this is my least favorite. <laughs> I mean, you said tish tish, but it's like, of all the stuff we've seen... Well, this... that's the other side of the coin, though, is like, it's Miyazaki. I mean, would it be a two if we hadn't watched the other ones? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't being compared to Spirited Away, on Poppy Hill... Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, that's in that, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, Princess Mononoke is my favorite anime, plus it's my favorite Miyazaki film. And, you know, when you compare it to stuff that is so good all the time, it starts to look a little diminished. My question is, would it still look good if you didn't know those? You know, compared to Dragon Ball Z, this is a golden god. <laughs> Everything to you. And I would bring it. I would bring in offerings of turkey and dressing. Um, if I say everything is like you know your that's holy grail to that's my point. <laughs> that's my point. It's all in comparison. So obviously you're going to give it a. Now why don't you tell us why we're wrong? <laughs> I mean, 
I know I mentioned this earlier, but I don't know if it's just because I've seen it so many times. Like, I don't remember what my initial reaction was when I first saw it. I don't even remember how old it was when I first saw it. But to Ooh. me, it makes sense to me. Like, I can follow along pretty clearly. But again, I don't know if it's just because it's, it's similar to the books I read or the, the other right. movies I watch. Or if it's just because I've watched it so many times. I don't know. I do think that it is a good action movie for an anime. Mm -hmm. If If you're not... If that's what you're looking for, I do think Castle in the Sky is probably one of the best action films that Miyazaki does. Because mm -hmm. most of his are usually feel-good adventures. Yeah. Story about learning. Where you learn, so yeah, where you learn something. Yeah. And now we get to our most important portion. Is it? I would think so. Overall enjoyment? I give it a one. Really? Yes. Okay. He did look like he was struggling. Yes. It's just... He struggles in most films. So dumb! <laughs> That's so <laughs> much dumb! Films. Oh, God. It's like... Okay, so early in the movie, they're in a train chase. And there's just crap falling apart everywhere. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. It's a train! It's not like nothing goes over these tracks. Now one fat lady and her five kids just tear everything up. <laughs> You're wrong, actually. Hey, why don't you go over there and work that hoist? <laughs> God, I hope there ain't no people in there. He's gonna kill him. Hit the brakes! <laughs> people just do 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 do. <laughs> no, they'd have died. Explosions from high yield explosive weaponry over there, right where Chris is. I would be dead. Yes. Not this. Not this movie. <laughs> I'm oh, my head hurts a little bit. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's I hit the wall. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. So, I guess if I'm 12, I don't care. I guess if I've watched this 14 times and I just love it, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, and I'm not, I'm not throwing stones about that because in this movie they would probably start floating. Um, they but, did float. Exactly. <laughs> the only person that made sense was the old coot who lived in the mine. Uncle Tom. Yes. Yeah. He was, it was kind of funny because he was the only one that was like, huh, why are you kids here? All right, let me tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Sit down, uh, shut up, uh, learn something. Uh, Uncle Paul is going to share some knowledge with you, boy. Uh, pretty much it. And Which, worst haircut ever in a movie. Whew. That poor girl. Yeah. Near uh, the end. Yeah. I was like. Well, it wasn't. She didn't intentionally. Yeah, she, she didn't ask for it. It <laughs> happened. It, yeah, well, at least you know he's a good shot. What do you give it for entertainment or enjoyment? Actually, I was going to give it a two. Um, granted, yes, uh, the confusing parts were where we're at, but in terms of action and keeping up in the pace was, you know, just on a roller hectic. coaster. <laughs> it was hectic, but it was on a roller coaster. Right, it just right. kept going, 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 going. It does ramp up, and it does have a good payoff. Yeah. And so I thought, awesome. Now that I... Okay, now that I know what the hell is going on halfway through this film, everything now just kind of flows through. So. You want to know my favorite scene? Yeah. Not counting the ones you two brought up? Yeah. Which is also my most aggravating scene, is when she cuts that large piece of chew ham off, puts it down her gullet, and then starts chewing. <laughs> She unhinges her jaw to get it in. And she's got seven teeth. I get that. She swallowed the meat, then started chewing. <laughs> that's 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 my problem with this movie. Everything in this movie can be summed up in that one analogy. She swallows meat, then starts chewing. This movie's like that to me. <laughs> Calm down, brother. You just gotta swallow the beginning and just chew on the rest of it as you get through it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> hey, yay. <laughs> Part of it says you are doing that on purpose you know, for a that, while. That's why I, I, I want to keep bringing back Miyazaki movies. I'm so sad I miss all the others just because A, I love them, and B, it's so fun to watch him watch them. That's what him and oh. Roger used to say about some of the movies. They're like, we should just film David watching this crap. And I'm like, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, it it's, is. It's painful. <laughs> for you, baby. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, why don't you tell us why this gives a two for you for entertainment? Because uh, it, it covers everything. It's got it's got comedy. It's got a little bit of heartstrings. It's got adventure. It's got suspense because you don't know what the hell's going on. 
Um, you call it suspense. <laughs> We're confused. I do agree with two of those. It does have action and comedy. Yes. The heartstrings are not as deep because the characters that you care about are children, yeah. which I accept and I'm happy with. They don't make it weird like Poppy Hill did. <laughs> Okay, first of all, to be Oh, yeah, fair, go ahead, please. I'm no, 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 I'm not saying... Questionable I'm, incest, go ahead. I'm all <laughs> <I'm only laughs> you. Okay, for, okay. I'm it's, totally in love with you, girl. I'm going to jump <laughs> off the building. Four scenes later, I might be your sister. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> okay, at a time where they're just recovering, like, they don't know what's going on. Family registries are all over the place. I mean, who knows what could happen? I mean, it was a it was a legitimate romance that just happens. Your movie did it right. <laughs> <laughs> that movie did it wrong. If you're gonna have a romance with kids, keep it light, keep it nice, keep it cute. What is that from? What? Keep it happy. Keep it. Oh, oh producer, sorry. Really? Yes. Yes. I've never seen it. Oh. I know never what you're talking. It. You're pretty much almost quote. Really? Yes. yes. <laughs> I was like Jesus. It must be just good advice then. So what else do you like about it? Um, Since we keep derailing you. Adam. Miyazaki. <laughs> Enough said. Enough said. But we're gonna have to get a picture of you with a plus sign and a picture of Miyazaki, and then have like a big smiley yellow sign yes. equals, and that'll be the next day I eight star anime shirt. Yes.